Hello friends, this is the fourth video in deep dive time intelligence DAX functions. In previous three videos, I went through the basics of time intelligence. Then we looked into dates MTD, quarter to date, year to date functions. Then we looked at date add function. Today we're going to look at a previous day, previous month, previous quarter, previous year, and next day, next month, next quarter, next year function. The first question comes in mind is, are these functions the same as using date add? Like for example, if I have a date add, which we saw yesterday, date add calendar date minus one comma month, if I choose the interval month and move it back by one month, is it the same as previous month? Or if I say date add calendar date plus one, and month, if I'm moving uh, dates at by one month interval forward, does the next month is the same? Actually, there is a slight difference. Let's take a look and you will find out when and how and where to use date add and these next previous uh, functions and what is the underlying difference between these functions. Okay, let's get to Power BI and ha have a look. So here uh, we are, uh, again, the same concept. So I have a year on our year, quarter, date, month on our x-axis or rows. And then I have actual dates showing in that context. So, and then I created uh, again, um, four func uh, functions. This should be day four. Um, so any of the name of the functions uh, should be day four. So. What is the previous day function? So just quickly look into that. It should be previous day function. So if you look in the function, uh, it is basically previous day and calendar date. There is no uh, interval, right? It is always fixed. Previous day means you're looking in the context, always going back one day. If it's a previous month, uh, looking in the context of the dates, it is always going back one month. You cannot give the interval. So this is one of the biggest difference between date add and uh, these previous and next uh, DAX functions. In date add, we can provide whether we want to move backward or forward and how many periods or interval we want to move backward, like three months, one month, two months. Here it is always fixed. It's previous day, previous month or next day, next month. Apart from that, what is the other difference between these functions? So if you closely look, um, I'm going to show here is a actual dates of this. And if we look at the previous day, what it is giving us, we have the date range 1st January 2017 to 31st December 2017. That's a full year date range for 2017. And the previous day given as the, the start of the date range, in this case is start of January 2017, and went back by one day. And it only gave us one day. It is not the set of the dates. It's only the set of the dates of the one day. If we look at a previous month, it is going taking the first date in the context we are looking at and giving the full range of the previous month. And similarly, it's giving us previous quarter and previous year. And if we further dig into this, if we go to the quarter level, so what is happening there? In quarter one, our range is January to March, as we know. And then previous day is taking the first date of the quarter, which is again January 2018, and giving us only one day. And here it is going to the first date and giving us the uh, uh, one month. And if you look at the quarter three, for example, so it's a July to September, and then it is giving us a June 30th. In this case, it's giving us the full June 2018. And here it is full previous quarter, and here it is full previous year. Now, the question is how it is different than the date add. So let's take a look what data does. We, we did look at that in yesterday's video, but if we put the date add function next to it, which also uses the date add minus one day, minus one month, minus one quarter, minus one year, what happens, how that is different. So I'm gonna bring that um, date add function as well, just parallel to this, and then we will compare what is happening here. So this is, if we look into this, this is a date add day function so which is move value move values our what if parameter if you remember so it's still minus one so it's keeping we are comparing apple to apple because previous month is always minus one and this one is also we are moving uh, 
by uh, one month uh, to the previous month. So let's bring these functions next to uh, these measures next to each other, and then then we will see how these are different. So all right. So now we have a date add function which is minus one and the previous day date add minus one and then previous. So if we look at 2017 and in this particular case, actual dates is of course this is full year, and the date add which is a date add minus one day, it is giving us the full set. Like this is 365 five days. I'm getting like range from 2016 to 2017. But in the previous day case, I'm only get previous day. And if we look at the date add month, it moved the whole this 2017 year by one month, moved back by one month. It start from December. Uh, um, yeah, it start from December and finishes at November. Whereas the previous month function is giving me only 2016 so there's a big difference so the range here is 12 months starting from December 2016 to um, November 30, uh, 2017 whereas in previous month it is only um, December 2016 because why it's December 2016 because it is taking the first date in the context we are looking at which is on the 1st January 2017 and then moving it back by one month. So that's a big, big difference. If you look at these two things, these are way too different. Uh, date add minus one month and the previous month, they are totally different results that they give depending on how you're looking at it. So it's, it's a big thing. And if you look at the quarter, uh, it's moving the whole date set by quarter. It's basically moving everything by quarter. But Previous quarter gave us the just the previous quarter in the contact. So similarly with the year. So um, now if we go further deep down into maybe look at the quarter level, let's to understand what's happening there. So the, our quarter two start from April and then June um, it finishes at June. So what we are getting here uh, in the date add the whole contacts like from it moved by one day. It's so it start from 31st March to 6th to 29th is so June. Um, that to 29th it's like three months so whereas in the previous day in when you're using previous day function we're only getting the one day and what is that and that is starting on the start of the uh, date in the context we're looking at so this start in the first april so it is giving us only 31st march only that that's what it is and if we go into uh, 2018 uh, if we look at the date at month, so we are getting the full three months moved back by one month, right? So starting from April, May, June, now we have a March, April, May. So we still have three months, but in previous month case, we have only one previous month. It means, what does that mean is previous month, previous quarter means is it's only go giving us the previous uh, it's not moving the data set. It, it is giving us the previous month. It is giving us the previous quarter given the date we are looking at and then it take that as the starting point and move back like previous month from there, right? So that's what it is happening. If we further go down just to uh, make sure that we understood it, like if we are looking at August 2018. So our date range is of course starting August 1st to 31st August. If I'm using a date add, the whole thing moved by one day. But if I'm looking at the previous day, it's only the one day, which is from August 1st is the starting date. So now I'm getting the July 31st. Similarly, uh, my date add month is moved back by one month. Now this is giving me full July because August, the previous date add is July. Whereas now in this case, it is the same because uh, they worked out fine. Because when we are the same granularity, we are the month like granularity, previous month, and the date add minus month will give the same result. So it again depends at what granularity we are looking at. If we are looking at the quarter level, uh, if I think in Q3, if we look at the quarter, uh, if we look at the previous quarter and the previous uh, uh, date add, they would be the same. Yeah, exactly. So when I am at the Q3, so date add is also giving me the previous quarter because it moved everything by three months. In, in, and the previous quarter is also moved by three months. So given the context you are looking at, so these date add and the previous quarter or uh, give the total different result set. 
So why this is important to know, let's say if we are looking at at the total, uh, 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 looking at the sales here, at the same, uh, I'm using these functions sim similarly previous day sale, previous month sale, and then you look at the sales here, at the total level, there is no sales at all showing up. And the why the total level, there is no sales showing up. Again, to understand that, if we go back to our previous um, uh, page here, let me collapse this quickly. Uh, collapse on. So we, we, here we are getting, um, if, if we have our actual dates are 27 day to 31st December, but if we look at our previous day, it is only December 2016. And if we look at the previous month, it is the December 2016 month. And I have filtered this page up to uh, 2021. So just want to make sure that we have the same filter on both the pages. And here we also, do we have a filter on this? Yes, we have the same filter on, so what does that means is, if you look at the previous day, it means on this day, it, it is 31st December 2016, there is no sales on that day. Why 2016? Again, just going back to make sure we understand. So our date range at the total level is starting from 1st January 27 to 31st December 2021. And when we say previous day, it took the 1st January 2017, moved it back uh, by one day, and then we get 31st December 2016. So in our system, there is no sales for uh, December 31st 2016, and that's why we are not getting the sales. And so that we understood now, okay, you know what the date ranges are returning and what the result is coming up. But if if I put the sales based on the date add, which which we, which measures we already have, and if I bring the date add uh, day minus one and date add minus one month date add minus one quarter and date add minus one year. So look at that. So the, the, the total, the, there is some values showing up in the total in the previous video, which is a date add video uh, I did, which is part three in the series. You should, under, you should go and watch it, like what these total means. But the point here is when you are using the date add at the total level, you are seeing some numbers, not necessarily those are correct, but you're seeing some numbers, but on the previous day sales, you are not seeing those numbers. And the reason behind that is because uh, how the dates are getting calculated, because when we are at total level and the date add function is giving me the full range from December 2016, uh, 31st December to 30th of December. And of course there is a sales in 2017, 2018, 2019, and so forth, so on. And that's why, we are seeing the sale at the end, but in previous day sales in here, it is only returning one day, which is 31st December 2016, and then there is no sales. If I actually change this instead of starting from 2017 and do on 2018, I will probably see some sales if there is a sales on the first day of the month, but I guess there is nothing and that's why we're not seeing it. Uh, depends on because there is no sales on the period, and let me try with the 2019, if there is any sales, yeah, here you go. So it means, when I'm at the 2019, this 15,387, if you don't know where this number is coming from, this is basically coming from, if we go back into uh, the, the other page and filter to the same 2017 and 20, just start from 2019. And if we look at the previous day, it is calculating 31st December 2018. It means there is a sales on that particular day and that's why we are seeing the uh, sales here. And in this case, we are always seeing the sales because it is a date of the full range starting from uh, whatever the range we have selected right now. So basically, which is a 31st December 2018 to 30th of December 2021. And similarly, next, there is the same concept. So the previous day, the one thing I want to um, uh, highlight here, when we, it's, it's the same page, but I have now next day and next month and next to that is date add. So next day and the next month, the way they are getting calculated, they are taking the range. So we, we in this particular case, we have a January to 31st December. When we do the previous month, it takes the starting date in the context it is looking at and then move back by one date. But when we are having the next month, it is taking the last date in the context and moving it back by one, uh, moving it forward by one month. So in this case, our 2017, the range is January to December 2017. And if we look at the next month, it is now um, moving it by one month. So giving us the following month, which is January 2018. So previous month, previous day, 
previous quarter, previous year, take the, in the context we're looking at it, take the first date in that range and give the uh, previous month is like full previous month or full previous quarter. When we are looking at the next day, next month, next quarter, next year, it is taking looking at the last date in the context and moving it up by forward by uh, either one month or one year, depending on it's a pre previous uh, next month or next year. So as you see, uh, these numbers, people will say, okay, they are sugar coated or they are the same. They are, they, 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 it's like data at minus one. They are in such scenario, they are granularity you are looking at, but depending on what granularity you are looking at, what function you are using, their meaning could be totally, totally different. I have seen many, many times people use previous day, previous month, and then they will say on the total line, I don't see any total. And the reason behind that is the date it is calculating, maybe there is no sales during that period or no value in that period. And that's why we are not seeing. I hope um, what you just saw here, uh, how we debug these functions, how we understand these functions, how they're working, how date add is, is very, very flexible, gave us a lot more opportunity, but how the previous month and previous day are totally different or next month and next day are totally different than just simply date add minus one month and date add uh, plus one month does not mean it's the same result as previous month and the next month because depending in the context you're looking at the the values could be totally different i hope you enjoyed this video and learned few things out of it uh, i will be still continuing doing some other time intelligence uh, videos uh, in 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 coming days do subscribe my channel until next video have a great day bye for now thanks for watching